This is a lesson on quadratic graphs. In this lesson, we will look at the general equation of quadratic graphs, how A, B, and C in the equation affects the graph, the symmetrical property of quadratic graphs, and using a quadratic graph to solve quadratic equations, and how to find the gradient using a tangent how to sketch quadratic graphs. We first look at the general equation of a quadratic curve, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The highest power of x is 2. For different values of a, b, and c, we will obtain different curves. The first curve has a equals to 2, b equals to 3, and c equals to 5. This curve cuts the y-axis at 5. c is the y-intercept. In the second curve, we do not have any y-intercept, therefore it cuts the origin. The third curve cuts the y-axis at negative 4. And the last curve cuts at the origin. This is the most basic curve, y equals x squared. Now we will take a look at how a, b, and c affects the graph. We first look at c, the y-intercept. Currently, the y-intercept is 0, and the graph cuts at the origin. Notice that this kind of curve is symmetrical about the y-axis. That is, the y-axis divides the curve into two equal parts. When we change the value of c, the curve remains the same shape, but cuts at the y-axis at different values of y. The current value of y is now 2. The y-intercept is now negative 3, and the equation is y equals to x squared minus 3. We now look at another equation. The current equation is y equals x squared plus 0x, which is just simply 0. That means that this is just the basic curve, y equals to x squared. When we change the value of b, notice that the curve moves to the left or to the right. The x term is therefore responsible for moving the curve to the left or to the right, depending on the value of b. Notice that there is no y-intercept, therefore it cuts at the origin. We now take a look at the coefficient of x squared, which is a. The current value of a is about 1. Therefore, this curve is very close to the basic curve. When we change the value of a, Notice the shape is now sharper when A increases. As A decreases, the curve becomes wider. And when A is negative, the curve is inverted. To remember this, we think of it as when you are positive, you will have a smiling curve. And when you are negative, you will have a frowning curve. Thus, when the value of A is positive, we have a smiling curve. And when the value of A is negative, we will have a frowning curve. A quadratic curve is symmetrical, 
that means that it can be divided into two equal parts. Most of the questions will ask you for the equation of the line of symmetry. To determine the line of symmetry, we can use method 1, which makes use of the x-intercepts. By averaging the x-intercepts, we can obtain the equation of the line of symmetry. The current x values are negative 0 0.9, and 3.5 and averaging it we have x equals to 1.26 which is at the line of symmetry however when we do not have any x intercepts then we cannot use method 1 in method 2 we make use of a and B in the equation and using the formula x equals minus B over 2A we can obtain the line of symmetry which is again x equals 1.26 when the curve changed to a new position the line of symmetry makes use of A and B in the equation to obtain the line of symmetry. We will now look at how we use a quadratic graph to solve a quadratic equation. When a quadratic curve cuts the x-axis where y is 0, Replacing y as 0, we will get a quadratic equation. The solution to the quadratic equation is just the x-intercepts. The solution to the quadratic equation are the x-intercepts. In this case, x is negative 1.6 and 2.4. In this second example, we see a line cutting the curve at two points. When a curve cuts a straight line at two points, at the intersection point, we get a new quadratic equation. To find the solution of the quadratic equation, we just read the x values at the intersection points. Thus, the solution to this equation are x equals to negative 0 0.6 and x equals to 4.6. The x values at the intersection points are the solutions to the equation which is formed when the line cuts the curve. We will now look at a tangent to find the gradient at a point. A straight line only has one gradient, but a curve has a gradient at every point. To get the gradient, we draw a tangent line. A tangent is simply a line that touches the curve only at one point. Notice that when the tangent is on the right, we have a positive gradient. And when it is at the bottom, we will have a gradient of zero. And when we move to the left, we have a negative gradient. So we can see that there is a different gradient at every point. And to find the gradient at the point, we need to draw a triangle under the line.
from the points that we want to find the gradient, we draw a right angle triangle of any size using the height over the base of this triangle, we can obtain the gradient of the curve at the point. We'll now look at a sample question. In the question, you will probably need to draw the graph given a range of values of x. This is done in the same way as the straight line where we draw up a table of values from negative 1 to 6. And substituting the values of x into the equation, we can obtain the y coordinates and then we can plot each point and draw the curve. The first question requires us to find the values of x when y equals to 2. y is equals to 2 is a horizontal line. We draw this line, y equals to 2, and it will cut the curve at two points. From the two points, we read off the values of x. Thus, when y is 2, there are two values of x. Next, we need to find a y value given an x value. When we are given an x value, we draw a line from the x axis where x equals to 4. We draw the line towards the curve and where it cuts the curve, we read off the x value, uh, the y value. For every x value, there is only one y value. But for every y value, there are two x values. In the third part, we need to write down the equation of the line of symmetry. From the previous examples, we see that we can get the equation by using the x-intercepts. Averaging out the x-intercepts, we will obtain the equation of the line of symmetry, which in this case is x equals 3. In the next part, we are required to find the minimum point. The minimum point is the point at the lowest part of the curve. In fact, the minimum point is found at the line of symmetry at the bottom of the curve. To find the y-ordinate of this point, we substitute x equals to 3 into the equation and therefore getting the point, the minimum point, 3 and negative 4. Next, we need to find the solution to the quadratic equation. Remember that these are just the x-intercepts on the x-axis. In part f, to solve the equation, we need to draw a line cutting the curve. This line has equation y equals negative 2x plus 3. That is, it cuts at 3 on the y-axis and from there, we draw a gradient of negative 2. That is, we draw to the left base 1 and height 2. The line must look this way if it is negative gradient. And where the line cuts the curve, the x values are the solutions to the quadratic equation.
in the last part, we need to find the gradient at x equals to 2. We locate the point where x equals to 2 and draw a tangent at the point. And from the point, we draw our triangle to obtain the gradient. Currently, the height of this triangle is 4 and the base is 2. And since the line slopes down to the right, it is a negative gradient. Height over the base gives us a negative 2. The gradient at x equals to 2 is negative 2. Finally, we will learn how to sketch a curve graph. There are basically three possible cases. In type 1, the equation is only made up of an x squared term and the y-intercept. Remember that this type of curve is always symmetrical about the y-axis. And when the curve has a y-intercept of negative 2, there will be two x-intercepts. When we sketch a curve, we must show all the x and y intercepts. And we must also note the coefficient of x squared. That if the coefficient of x squared is positive, then it's a smiling curve. So we should draw the smiling curve passing through the x and y intercepts. Remember that in the straight line, to find the x-intercept, we can put y as 0. And to find the y-intercept, we put x as 0. This is done in the same way. In the second type of equation, there is no y-intercept. Therefore, the y-intercept is actually at the origin. The curve will pass through the origin. To obtain the x-intercept, we can just factorize the equation. And by putting y as 0, we can obtain the x-intercepts. Once again, remember that when we sketch a curve, we must first mark out the x and y intercepts and then look at the x squared term to determine whether it is a smiling curve or a frowning curve. In the third equation, we have A, B and C given to us. And once again, to sketch this curve, we need the x and y intercept. The y intercept is at negative 2. The x intercept is obtained by putting y equals to 0. And either we factorize this equation to get our x values, which is the x intercepts, or we can use the formula to find our x values to obtain our x-intercepts. This completes the lesson on curve graphs. Thank you.